So hey guys, Bullhorn Betty here. So there's some things I'm a little confused about right now and maybe you guys can shed some light on it. Um, this is related to Bethany Funk and Brian Koberger. Now hear me out. So somebody told me that uh, Chris McDonough uh, did a great explanation last night on his channel, The Interview Room. So I decided to watch it. And as I was watching it, something kind of popped into my head. He was talking about the, very briefly, but talking about the Brady disclosure. The, which basically states that somebody withheld some exculpatory evidence from the case. And so it got me thinking here because there's been such a big deal about Bethany Funk, which is one of the surviving roommates of a brutal homicide that took place on the outskirts of the University of Idaho to four of her roommates, uh, Kaylee Gonzalez, Maddie Mogan, Ethan Chapin, and um, Zianna Cronodal. So we're all asking ourselves, why is the defense making such a big deal to try to get Bethany Funk to come to the preliminary hearing where they're saying it's not a, a mini trial? And then when I watch Chris McDonough, he's talking about the Brady disclosure and about withholding exculpatory evidence and this is on the heels of hearing all about how Bethany Funk might have exculpatory evidence that might benefit Brian Koberger. Is it possible that she is the Brady disclosure? What if she is the reason they had to disclose do the Brady and Giglio disclosure? Because that's the only place so far that I've heard about this exculpatory evidence. One's in a, a filing by the prosecution, which is basically stating somebody was withholding exculpatory evidence. Now we're having somebody that's fighting like heck not to have to come back to Idaho to be a witness for the defense that may have exculpatory evidence. The good news is, is that there is an agreement made. And this agreement basically is saying that they'll give her an interview, whether that's a formal interview or an informal interview, you know, a formal being like a way of a deposition, the other one just sitting down and just having a conversation kind of off the record, but just wants some information. I have a funny feeling it's gonna be all on the record. Um, it is going to be, you know, um, it's going to be in form of most likely a similar like a deposition or mediation, a, a, a legal type of setting is, is what I uh, would assume is going to take place uh, with Bethany Funk and the defense. But again, I, I just it, it just makes me wonder because what does she have and what information did she see? What did she see? What did she hear? Uh, there's got to be something. There's not a whole lot to go on because this entire case is basically under gag order. The um, challenge, the, the, the media challenging the gag order, it was denied because they jumped over necessary steps to get into that court to have the Supreme Court hear them. So I don't know what's going on with that. Hopefully they go ahead and get that resolved. Um, but this is starting to concern me. Is Bethany Funk the exculpatory evidence that was not disclosed that triggered the Brady Giglio disclosure in the Brian Koberger case? Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the Bullhorn Betty channel. Take care and God bless.